Okay, let's review some uh, of our energy uh, equations. We know that the total change in energy of the system is equal to the work due to non-conservative forces. The total energy we know is the kinetic energy uh, of all the particles in the system plus all the potential energies of that system at that time. The work due to non-conservative forces is equal to the integral of the forces non-conservative, just those forces that are not conservative, dotted into the displacement of the object. The gravitational potential energy is mgy or mg delta y. Uh, don't forget y can be positive or negative depending on where you set your zero point, if you go below it or above it. Potential energy of the spring is one half kx squared, where x again is a displacement of the, uh, of the spring from the equilibrium point, and k is one half mv squared, as we are familiar with. If there's no friction and there's no air drag, then there's no work due to these non-conservative forces. Therefore, the change in energy is zero. Another way of stating that is the initial energy is equal to the final energy of the system. Okay, let's look at an example. Here we have a roller coaster. A 500 kilogram roller coaster cart is on this roller coaster. It starts out at 20 meters. It's going to go down to zero meters, back up to 10, and then back up here. Uh, to 25 meters. The roller coaster cart starts off with a speed of 4 meters per second. That's its initial speed at the top. Okay. What I want to know, I want, I'm going to ask you several questions. Number one is, what is the um, initial uh, energy of the cart here at this point? We'll call this point A. At point A, what is the initial energy of the cart? Uh, you could pause the video now. Okay. You should have found that the total energy at part A is um, 102 kilojoules. There's 4,000 joules or 4 kilojoules of energy stored up as kinetic energy. And then the potential energy here would be an extra 98,000 uh, joules or 98 kilojoules. The next question is, what would the energy be here at point B, at point C, at point D, what would those energies be at those points? I should have mentioned that there is no friction and no air drag in this problem. You could pause the video now and tell me what are the energies at points B, C, and D. Okay? We know that um, energy must be conserved because there are no non-conservative forces. Therefore, the energy at A, B, C, and D are all equal. Here's a trick question. What is the energy at point E, at the very top? Some would say, well, energy is conserved, and therefore it's all equal. But um, if you're clever, you won't say that. What is the energy at point E? You can pause it now and discuss among yourselves or, or think about the problem. At point E, if you simply look at the energy required to get to the top, or what the potential energy would be if you were at the top, you would calculate it to be 122,500 joules, or 122.5 kilojoules. That, ener that energy is more than the energy at any of these points before it, so the, the, the cart will not make it to the very top. Will not make it to the very top. So the energy it would have at point E is undefined because it doesn't reach it. Again, it's a trick question. Um, I forgot to mention that your answers may vary here whenever I asked, what is the total energy here? Some people might have said 4,000 joules. Um, if you say 4,000 joules, that would be correct if this would be your zero point. Okay? Um, the change in energy, though, however, throughout would be the same. Um, as you go down, you would get negative potential energy um, typically what, what you would start with though is that this would be your zero point since I labeled it so probably all of you said this is zero and therefore this has what did I say 98,000 joules of energy at the beginning and so it has kinetic and potential because we're above the zero point but you could have let this be the zero or let this be the zero or let that be the zero point your, um, your answers may vary if that's the case
The next question is, what is the speed of the cart at point C? It starts at 20, it's going to go down, going to rise up again to 10 meters, and back down again. At 10 meters above the ground, what is the speed at that point? Okay, so pause your, pause your video and find the answer. The answer, we know that the energy is conserved throughout, and so we know we have 102 joules of energy, 102 kilojoules of energy here at this point. Since it's 10 meters above the, above the ground, we know that the potential energy at this point is, um, is 49 kilojoules. Therefore, we should have about 53 kilojoules of kinetic energy here. Solving uh, the kinetic energy is equal to 53 kilojoules. We should find that the speed is around 14.56 meters per second. We have one more question. We know the car does not make it to the top because there's not enough energy to get it to the top of point E. The next question is, how fast does this cart have to go in order to get it up to the very top? In other words, um, give me the relationship between all of this energy here must equal all potential here. So pause the video and, um, and calculate that answer. Okay. Um, in order to make it to the top, uh, we know we have to have 122.5 kilojoules of energy. We know this has 98 th uh, kilojoules of energy, of potential energy, so we have to add um, about 24.5 kilojoules of energy, of kinetic energy here. That translates to a speed of about 9.899 or 9.9 .9 meters per second. Um, this is not an unrealistic problem. Nine meters a second at the beginning is a, is a dangerous roller coaster, probably would not happen. Okay, here's another example. <clears throat> Here we have a mass M on an inclined plane whose angle is 42 degrees. The initial speed of the mass is two meters a second. This friction between the mass and the plane, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 .6, 0 0.6. It's going to travel from here to the end of the plane, which is five meters long. The question is, what is the speed at the end of the at the end of the plane? So, uh, let's use energy arguments here, and um, let's work this problem together. Uh, you can work it now. Pause it, and I'll come back with the with the uh, my answer. Here, one of the first things. Here, one of the first things we have to ask ourselves is, um, is there, uh, is energy conserved? And in this case, energy is not conserved. We lose energy due to friction. So the change in energy is equal to WNC. E final minus E initial is equal to the work due to non-conservative forces. The final energy here uh, at the very end is simply the kinetic energy of the block. The initial energy would be the initial kinetic energy plus the potential energy at the top. This assumes that the bottom would be zero potential and at the top would be uh, potential energy MGH. The work due to non-conservative forces is friction. Um, the friction force is up the plane. The uh, displacement is down the plane. That's where we get the negative from. It's the dot product. Uh, you have to draw a free body diagram to find what the frictional force is. It's mu times the normal force. The normal force is mg cosine theta. And don't forget this x. People forget this x all the time. It's that um, f dot x uh, part. So we just expand this guy out. The initial speed is 2 meters per second. The height is going to be 5 meters times the sine of our angle. Uh, we have um, everything we need except for the final velocities. Masses cancel, and you can find the final velocity. I don't know what it is, but you can figure it out. <coughs> 